This is the worst mic I've ever tried. And it's $180, and we need to talk about that. We also need to talk about the five gaming companies that are making just terrible microphones. I'm gonna have to try really hard not to get upset during this video. It'll probably happen a little bit, and so before that inevitably happens, I wanna tell you something I'm really happy about. Reallygoodmousepads.com is finally here. About a week and a half ago, I posted an April Fool's video announcing it, and while obviously that like hand warming uh, mouse pad was, was not real. The company, the real, really good mouse pads.com is actually a real thing. And the mouse pads are really good, which is why I named it that. I particularly use the gold and purple cartographer design, which is like our new modern take on that topography design that you see everywhere. And I just published a black and white rendition of that. So if you're tired of everyone using topography, you're looking for something new, this is a great clean design. So if you've been looking to spice up your battle station, get your setup looking a little bit cleaner, I go to reallygoodmousepads.com. Thanks for letting me share that with you. But now back to the ROG Carnix. This really is the worst microphone I've ever tried. And I know that sounds like a personal opinion, but I promise you, there's not a single person on the planet that will sound good using this microphone. It's not possible with the way they made it. Uh, is this a joke? The thing is, we're seeing more and more gaming companies pull stuff like this, and it's been going on for years. This just happens to be the worst offender I've seen so far. And so I spent a couple hours reinstalling all the software, testing all of these microphones that have been accumulating. These companies are committing five egregious sins in the microphone market. So before you spend hundreds of dollars on a microphone, you need to know what these sins are. You need to know examples of these microphones committing these sins. And then of course, I will give you suggestions on microphones you should look at instead if you're looking for a gaming, streaming, content creation microphone. Cool? Cool. These are all mics from gaming companies that you recognize. We've got ROG, Razer, HyperX, SteelSeries, and Logitech. These three are microphones from companies that specialize in audio and content creation. We've got Rode, Elgato, and Beacon. And just for the context of the video, as I refer to these, I'm just gonna call these the big three. Just because in my opinion, these are the three companies that have done this the most right, okay? So let's jump into those five cardinal sins and let's start from the least offensive to downright real really not good very first sin on this list is lacking features and and cutting corners as time goes on and these gaming companies continue to release microphones it doesn't seem like they're adding new features to enhance the experience it seems like they're cutting them out to save on cost for example none of these five microphones have as decent of a mixing software a mixing suite as the one that elgato released four years ago. They've either got really simple ones, like Logitech just released their mix line, which is, it's not the same. It's fine, but it's it's like 20% of what Wavelink does from Elgato. The Steel Series released Sonar, which I reviewed, and from the surface, it looked fine, but then I saw a bunch of comments saying this actually tanked their PC's performance. Very few of these have any kind of decent VSTs or audio plugins, like EQ and compression, that make a big difference. And even some of the bare minimum features are being cut out, like Logitech's newest Blue Yeti G X doesn't have a headphone jack, which is fine for microphones like $50 and cheaper, but for like, this is like $120, $130, this is a full feature microphone, and it doesn't have a headphone jack. And I just can't think of any reason to cut out such a widely used and convenient feature other than to save costs. I mean, it'd be one thing if all these microphones were cheaper microphones, but most of these are more expensive than the fully featured Elgato Wave 3. This is the Wave 1, they don't sell that anymore. I just realized. Sin number two is one that never gets talked about, but it frustrates me a lot. And I have gotten in trouble with brands for calling them out for this. And it's that they seem to release products that add zero value to the market, don't do anything new. And I need to hit on that one hard, but speaking of providing value, I need to thank the sponsor of today's video, Owned Pro. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know the name Owned.TV, but they just released a brand new suite of free tools for streamers called Owned Pro. And these tools are there to make your streams really pop. Some of these tools include the ability to recolor and overlay. So if you find an overlay you like, but it doesn't match your color scheme, you can actually adjust it in the editor. And suddenly you have an overlay that you're guaranteed no one else has. Also, when you go into a scene builder where you add all of your layers, your overlays, your alerts, you actually can separate the foreground from the background. That way, if you want certain things from a scene behind your camera and certain things in front of your camera, you can actually put those into OBS separately, which is a huge, huge quality of life update. They also added a really simple browse tool for finding elements and widgets and things to add to your overlay so you can make your 
your stream more unique. Let's say you find a theme that you really like, but you want to add some variety and some fun widgets to it. It's really easy to do that with own.pro. They just give you so many new and cool customization tools that nobody else is offering in the space right now. So if you want to go check them out, I'll put a link to them down in the description below. Also, that link helps support the channel. So if you click it, thank you. Let's jump back into sin number two. Let's talk about providing value for the market. This ROG mic is a prime example of this. It is a USB mic with very few features that does absolutely nothing new. And it even looks and behaves a lot like the HyperX mic. So you have to ask the question, why did you make this? What value did you provide the market other than just releasing another microphone that ROG fans will pay you money for? I have a whole rant on Elgato's new Mixline server that they released. They're mixing software for their mics, and I just, I think you understand the point. Like, it's cool that they did it, and I know it's in beta, but like, it, it does, it has missing features that make it unusable. It does 20% of what Elgato Wavelink does. It does 10% of what the Beacon software does. Like why even release that? Why, why bother making it? Do something new, provide new value. Stop throwing mediocre things at gamers hoping they won't know any better and they'll make you a quick buck. Okay, okay, hold on, let's bring it back. This is an important video. <laughs> I'm not here to get angry. <laughs> this has just been, it's been like three days of research getting more and more frustrated. Okay, let's move on to sin number three. And it's just gonna keep getting worse. One of the biggest problems with gaming companies trying to make audio devices is they underestimate how difficult and nuanced audio is. And they end up either not adding features or adding bad features that make the device breakable. And I don't mean physically breakable. This is actually a pretty solid piece of machinery here. I mean, the streamer's gonna touch something and destroy their audio for the rest of the stream and not be able to fix it. The HyperX is a solid example of that. There are a lot of knobs and dials that you need to have on the fly to change things if you don't have a big mixing, mixing software, mixing suite or whatever. For example, your headphone volume. You should be able to change that. This microphone has two dials. One is polar patterns on the back that very few streamers are gonna know what they do. And I wish I could just tell you if you have this, set it to cardioid, the little heart shaped one, and then never touch it again. The other one is this little dial here at the bottom and it doesn't tell you what it does. I actually assumed it was a headphone jack because that makes the most sense. Turns out this is the gain dial. This controls how much boost, how much gain you're adding to your microphone, which if you don't know this, and I, I haven't said this in this video, but I studied sound uh, audio engineering in college. That was my my major. I almost said degree. I didn't graduate. I spent countless hours in a recording studio. I even own a recording studio in my home. Gain is something that you set once. You dial in once for your specific use and your specific voice, and then you never touch again. Because if you move it, it's very hard to get it back to the right place just right. This is right front and center, and it's a really loose dial, and there aren't even even any markers across like two thirds of the entire dial. So if you bump this, you are never getting your gain back to where it needs to be. I've said in almost every gaming interface video, stop putting the gain dials somewhere you can bump them. I get that you wanna make it plug and play so you can adjust the gain without having to go into software, but do what SteelSeries did, put it on the back. So you can dial it in and then never accidentally touch it again. Razer's Synapse mixing software is another terrible offender of this. There are two faders, two sliders in the app that both control the headphone volume. They both do the exact same thing, but you can move them independently. And they're on two different pages of the app. So you can adjust one on one page. Let's say you turned it down kind of low and then you went into the main app and you cranked it up to 100 and you're like, why is it still so quiet? It's because the other fader is turned low. They should be the same fader. I did a video on that exact problem two and a half years ago. And I want you to just remember that for sin number five, because we're gonna get back to that exact thing. Sin number four comes from the simple fact that the big three are audio companies with audio expertise, and the other five are gaming companies with no audio expertise. This causes them to make terrible decisions on how an audio device functions. And probably most importantly, when they make those mistakes, they don't recognize how big of a problem they really are. I did a whole video on the SteelSeries mic and one of those mistakes that they made that basically ruined the mic. And I'll link to that video if you want more detail, but the ROG actually made that same exact mistake but a hundred times worse. The reason that I think this microphone is so bad is that they programmed the audio settings so poorly that there will not be a single user, a single streamer that uses this mic that doesn't peak or, or clip. If you don't know what that is, that's when you get so loud that it overdrives the gain, the preamp, and you get that like crackliness. 
This is peaking. The sound you're hearing right now is peaking. The reason it happens on this microphone and also on the SteelSeries microphone is because they combined three separate settings that should be separate. It's separate on all the big threes microphones. They combined three settings into a single dial. Mic gain, mic monitoring, which is how much you hear yourself, and mic output, which the uh, difference between first and third are confusing for some people, but you will understand it in 30 seconds. And when you have this dial set to 100, your gain is turned up to 100%, your mic monitoring is turned up to 100%, you hear yourself at full volume, and it's outputting the signal, the final signal after all that, at 100%. That's the way it should be. The problem is, as you turn that dial down, they all go down in different stages. If you go down to 1%, mic monitoring is at 1%. You can't hear yourself anymore, but the gain is still at like 95%. Your voice will 100% still peak, even if you have the mic set to 1%, if you get any louder than a talking voice which streamers always get louder than a talking voice. But instead of turning down the gain, they just turn down the mic output. So the gain is still high, you're still peaking, but they just lowered the volume of that peaked output. Here, let me show you. I actually plugged this into my audio software and recorded it at different volumes. This first screenshot I recorded in the microphone set at 60%. You can see in the largest waveforms that the tops and bottoms are still cut off. And that's what causes the peaking. When the waveform goes past the maximum bandwidth, and so so it has to chop off the tops and bottoms of those waves. It causes a really harsh corner and a flat edge and then another really harsh corner and that's what causes that noise. In the next screenshot, I have the mic turned down to 1%. There should not be a signal at this point, but you can see even though the wave is smaller, the tops and bottoms are still chopped. What's happening here is the gain is only turned down to about 95%. The wave is still too large and it's still peaking and getting chopped off. And then to make it sound like they're turning it down, down, they just shrunk down that clipped audio wave. That's the difference between gain and output. It's still, the gain is still up there, it's still clipping, then they just lowered the volume of that clipped shot instead of turning down the gain. And what's worse is that I could no longer hear myself because the mic monitoring had gone all the way down to 1%. So everybody using the mic is gonna think that their mic is really quiet and they're gonna crank it back up and it's gonna ruin everything. Even if they don't wanna hear themselves, it is impossible to not clip on this because the lowest you can get the gain to be is like 95% gain. I was in so much disbelief that this is a product that ROG shipped, that, that everybody at ROG tried it and said, yep, this is good enough for us. I was worried I did something wrong. And so I had my audio engineer friend, the guy who actually graduated the degree I didn't graduate from, he tested it. This is what he said. Uh, is this a joke? <laughs> <laughs> It's always clipping. And then I thought, well, maybe they sent me a bad one. Here are three reasons why I know they didn't send me a bad one. First, I sent this very detailed feedback back to them. I let them know, hey, these are the problems I'm experiencing. And if this was a bad mic, they would have said, oh my gosh, that shouldn't be happening. We must have sent you a bugged unit. Let us replace it for you. And instead, I got, all right, well, thanks for the feedback. That's, I mean, I didn't get a direct quote from them, but that was essentially what I got. Cool. Thanks, bud. And two, I was up till four in the morning last night watching every single review on this microphone and every single YouTuber that talked about it, even though they didn't mention that problem, every single one of them clipped at some point in their video. There's not a single review of this microphone without clipping happening. But the worst example of all this is that in ROG's own video, their own showcase where ROG employees use the microphone in a YouTube video, the ROG employee shows the software and says, I like to turn it down to 3%. And he uses, he makes some dumb excuse. He says like, I, I, it's because I like the mic really close to my face. Microphones are supposed to be close to your face. You shouldn't have to turn the mic down to 3% just to talk to it four inches away in a normal talking voice. If you're down to 3%, I shouldn't be able to hear you. And, and that's the most frustrating one because that shows that they were aware. They know this is a problem and they shipped it anyway, which brings us to sin number five and it's my least favorite one. And it's the fact that these companies don't care about shipping a good product. I wish I could look back at all these and say, oh, these were just the, pro the growing pangs, right? The problems with companies making their first microphone and then they fix it and they make it better. But the thing is, they don't. 
They're usually aware of these problems and they're shipping it anyway and then they're never fixing it. In this case is the worst one because it's a $180 microphone that you cannot sound good using. But another terrible example is the Razer software that I mentioned earlier in this video. I made a video two and a half years ago. Razer actually sent me this microphone. I reviewed it and in the review, I talked about their software and I called it unfinished. I said, it's a good start. But there are a lot of bugs and this shouldn't be working this way. That doesn't make any sense. And this happens when you do this. Two and a half years later, those bugs are still in there. They have no intent on fixing it. I can absolutely accept mistakes. I, I think the internet has forgotten how to forgive people and how to let people grow. And I, I think that works for creative people trying to make companies and make really cool products. I think we give them a little bit of patience. But if you released and sold a half finished product and then two and a half years later, it's not different. It's not fixed. It, it shows what your intent was from the beginning, which is we've got this name recognition. We've got this fan base. If we release this thing, this many people will buy it. And that's good enough for us. It just reeks of taking advantage of your fan base. And they all do it on different scales, by the way. I'm not trying to lump them all into the same thing. In fact, let me just tell you, for these three, if I were to rate them from n not great to never buy, this is probably the order I would put it in. These two microphones have frustrations, but they might not be frustrations that bother you. And you can plug them into a more robust mixing software like Beacon or Elgato or, or Rode. This mic has that fundamental issue with the gain that I mentioned, but it's, it's workaroundable if you can tweak for a long time. And if you can tweak it, it actually sounds like a good mic. This is an older mic. So this is a V2, but they have a V3. I haven't tried it yet, but just the way that Razer's handled their audio software, it shows that they have no intent on actually building a good experience. I would stay away from Razer audio entirely. And this is a completely unusable, expensive microphone. Please nobody buy this microphone. Unless they show that, they, that I'm wrong and they wanna fix it, which I am totally open to hearing. So let's talk about good microphone. Let me just give you some quick suggestions. If you want simplicity, Elgato is powerful and simple. This is a condenser microphone. It is cheap. I think they're going for less than $130 now. It comes with a powerful but simple audio mixing software called Wavelink. And if you don't like this particular microphone, you can use the Wave XLR and plug whatever microphone you want into it and get that exact same software. This is the other end of the spectrum. Rode makes some really cool stuff. I actually really like their $100 dynamic mic, the Rode Pod mic. It's one of my favorite cheap, uh, dynamic microphones, but they've got their Rode Unify software. Unity? Unify? I always forget which one it is. It's either T or an F. It is, it is more on the pro audio side. Rode is a pro audio software. So if you're familiar with audio mixing and you want something really robust, this is great. Beacon is perfect right in the middle. It's an all-in-one device. It has a lot of the simplicity of Elgato while introducing a ton of really cool, powerful tools. Things like an expander, which you probably don't know what it is, but it's amazing. It's basically a noise gate, but a hundred times better. It's got a routing table that is incredibly robust and all the processing is done on the microphone. So you can not only hear the effects coming out of your headphone jack, but also it doesn't put any of that pressure on your PC to do all that processing for you. Neither of these are particularly cheap for dynamic USB microphones. So another great one is is the Deity, I think it's like V07U or something. That's got a really cool analog limiter in it, so it's harder to peak, and it doesn't have mixing software, but you can pair it with the Wavelink software or the Beacon software, and it's fine. So those are all great microphones. I will link to all of them down below. There is no reason for you to buy any of these. And I would love some solidarity from the gaming community. We need to demand more from these gaming companies. They keep putting out half-finished audio products that are the same price or more expensive than the ones who know what they're doing and care about what they're doing. And look, if you are one of these companies still watching this, you haven't clicked away yet, uh, I'm happy to jump on consulting calls. I've done that for m actually many of these companies I'm talking about. A lot of these problems can be fixed if you want to fix them. So anyway, viewers, um, I really hope this helps. It's the whole reason I made this video. I want you to know these things. I hoped it saved you a ton of money and a ton of headache buying a microphone. And as always, happy streaming. See you on reallygoodmousepads.com.